Okay, I wasn't originally planning on making a video for uh, this little hatchet sheath. Somebody just, they had this hatchet, they want a cover for it so they can carry it on their belt when they're out in the woods. Um, but as I was making the pattern, and it's getting more and more complicated, um, we'll use that instead of sophisticated, I decided, you know what, it might be a good idea to talk about the pattern at least, and kind of just do a quick video on showing how to make this particular hatchet sheath I'm working on. But anyway, just to confuse people, and I apologize in advance for any confusion, this is actually all the different layers of the pattern kind of superimposed over each other, which is a lot of times how I draw them out. And then if I decide I need to give this pattern to someone else, I'll break it apart and make it a little bit clearer. But in this pattern, I started with a tracing of the hatchet itself. I added some seam allowance around the front of it. And then I changed that again a little bit later. Um, that's going to be the spacer piece that goes in between the two layers of leather. The front piece goes loops down like this and around. And it's just going to be kind of a odd little chicken nugget shape. The back piece I determined I wanted to put a spring clip on it so it needed to go up a little higher. I marked where spring clip would be based on the weight of the hatchet and where it balanced. And then I marked around that. And then I put on what I think of as a thumb here. Or, uh, it's a retention strap that sticks off down off the bottom. So the back piece is going to have that and this piece added on to basically what the front piece is going to be. The reason I think of this as a thumb is it's about thumb sized and shape. And actually a way that I measured the hatchet for it was I wrapped my thumb around and decided, oh, I need another quarter or half inch or so to really snap because I could probably get a snap to set like that, but it'd be better if it was up here a little bit more. So we'll add a little bit onto that. And I may wind up adding just a little bit more onto this still, but it's about a half inch longer than my thumb from that joint right there, just like it is on the hatchet and wrapping around. So I Otherwise, the only other thing you always have to worry about is how the hatchet's going to stay in there. And that's why the spacer piece has kind of some cutouts on it. Um, I wanted to set this up to where the top of the sheath went over the top of the hatchet just a little bit because the weight of it and where it balances you can either have two pieces holding like this but then they're so close together that this knob on the end of the handle won't fit out or you can have something in front of the handle and something right over the tip to balance it out and hold it in place. Because otherwise, if there's just something that's not in front of the tip, it tips back and falls out. So what that means on this is if there's something right here, which the spacer is going to go right up to there, and there's something up here, this is going to want to naturally lock on those two points. Because the balance is going to be pulling it forward and down like this. So it'll lock up against that. So you have to actually take and roll the hatchet out a little bit. And that's what all this extra space was added for, is for the tip of the hatchet to move through and be able to pull out of the sheath. So you have to tilt it down a little bit and kind of roll it up and then pull it back out. So it should stay in the sheath even if it um, gets unsnapped accidentally. But we don't have that, like I said, where you've got this little hole that you got to try and wiggle the hatchet up through and the knob on the end of the hatchet doesn't want to go through it. That's always makes for an annoying sheath as far as I'm concerned. So that's the pattern. And it's confusing mishmash of levels. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to a piece of leather and cut them out. Then you'll be able to see what the, each piece looks like. Okay, now I cut the front piece out and then I flip the pattern over to cut the back piece so that I'll have smooth leather on the inside and outside basically on the front and back um, so the actual interior of it's just going to be the flesh side I'm not actually lining this it's a fairly simple pattern otherwise I don't think it needs to be lined in this case
And since I'm not lining it, I'm not going to be stitching all the way around this uh, retention strap, the little thumb here. I'm going to leave it extra long. I can always trim it down later. If I decide I left it too long. But making it longer is not possible. Well, it's not easy. It might be possible. It'd be a lot easier just to cut another one out than to try. And where I've got a mark through the pattern, I'm just using a scratch hole to punch a bunch of little tiny holes. And I'll just kind of connect the dots as I'm cutting. All right, and that should be our spacer bit. That should go in there just fine. Rest against it, bumps against the top there, against this, but still will pull out just fine. So there's the three pieces. Let's go ahead and start putting stuff together. Bevel edges. Not worry about that too much yet. After I get it put together, I might be trimming that down some more before I put the last snap in it. This piece all the way around on the outside as well. All right, let's kind of mock this up a little bit. Like that. With the hatchet in it. Pretty very important step determining where our snap's going to have to be. All right, so everything's lined up. I'm just going to use my scratch hole and really push down hard and make a mark there and right through this strap. And I know what I've got to work with. Punch an eighth inch hole. Not the hatchet. We're going to punch this hole just a little bit further back than where the scratch hole made the mark because the snap's going to add some thickness to it as well. All right, now let's trim off this piece because now we know how long it is. And it was just about right. So let's grab our pattern one last time. Punch the hole for the rivet. That holds that in. And you can use an oblong punch for this. A lot of times I just take the same punch I'm using for the rivet hole, one eighth inch punch. Punch each side of that. And then take my round knife and cut that slot out from between. Just four little cuts. Pop our spring clip in there. Should line up with that hole. Grab a rivet setter. One of the other advantages of this sheath, rather than it just not having that hard to get the hatchet out of it that a lot of hatchet sheaths are, uh, it also leaves the pole, the hammer part on the back of the hatchet, exposed. So you can hammer on something with it while the blade's covered, so you don't have a sharp blade coming back towards your head every time you go to hit it. We gotta set this snap before we can put it all together, because otherwise that's gonna be hard to do. This snap can wait until after it's sewn. And I'm gonna use line 24 snaps. They're good heavy ones. This is about 
9 to 10 ounce. It should fit that without too much hassle. We'll find out. Now the part with the cap on it can be tricky sometimes because it'll look like you got plenty but then it'll mash down into the cap and just disappear. So just to be sure let's go ahead and take a little bit of that off around that hole. I've had these consistently set well in about 8 ounces of leather, but 10, not as much. So, take a little bit of leather off there. Just so I feel better about my chances of getting it on the first try. slap some glue on this real quick and I can go down and get it stitched now with the waxes and stuff that Latigo has in it waxes and oils glues don't work really good all the time um, so it might be best to take and scrape it a little bit where we're gonna be putting it together just to add a little bit more that it can get a hold of Okay, now a quick bit of stitching on the machine. A trip over to the belt sander to sand those edges to match where I've got those three layers. And then I'll be able to just finish up the edges and snap this together. It should be good to go. Okay, I did not bother filming sanding the edges with the uh, belt sander. It's just a little 1x30 belt sander that makes an annoying noise. So I didn't bother putting that on film. But I'm going to go along right where I used that sander to even it up and make sure I've still got my edges beveled. I take off any rag left by that sander. And we're just going to burnish the edges up and that should be all we need for this. This is a step that some people may consider not absolutely necessary on something utilitarian like this, but I basically always consider burnishing my edges to be necessary. It just makes everything feel that much more finished when somebody picks it up. Now, 
basic little utilitarian hatchet sheet. Make sure that it fits in there. Snaps closed. Spring clip on the back for a belt. It doesn't come out any which different way I can push or pull it. And it doesn't come out even if it's unsnapped unless you pull it out the right way.